Maybe clear it up. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll just change that class four to a positive, which looks at your your polynomial up here. Right here. Oh, I used to say that. Oh, I'll just redo it. I'll just redo it. You're, you're using <laughs> the wrong set of numbers. Yeah, maybe. There. Maybe put a little more space because yeah, I got gotcha. you. I'm just gonna redo it. Okay.
test right now. You're excited to be ready. Wait. One then we're together. Uh, you try your best to start like this is fresh. Don't just try and remember what you did in your homework and don't just look off of your homework unless you're completely out of ideas. Okay, you want to have your homework when it comes time for the test, and it won't be a question right off your homework, so you can't just remember what you already did. Okay, do yourself a favor and treat it like it's a brand new, fresh problem. Okay, uh, so let's talk about this problem. Uh, so we're saying that these things, these so far, these three things, are the zeros of some polynomial. So first, let's talk about this 4 plus i. So if somebody did the work of finding these zeros, they're telling you the zeros are five, five again, and four plus i. How do you imagine, if you were like write the story of how they came up with that four plus i, how did they do that? What did they use to come up with a four plus i? <coughs> When you find zeros of a polynomial, how do you wind up coming up with a four plus i as your answer? Where does that come from? Kind of some right? And how does that? Happen? Well, that means uh, quadratic formula. If you use a quadratic formula, you'll take the square roots of negative numbers sometimes, right? So, yeah. Uh. So if you use a quadratic formula, do you wind up usually with just 4 plus i? Mm -hmm. No? Uh, it has the plus or minus. Plus or minus. So we also can assume that one of the zeros that this person found, right? If they're working with a, a normal polynomial, normal meaning that there's not i's in the polynomial. There's no i's in that polynomial. It's all rational coefficients, okay? Not, uh, not imaginary ones. So we can assume that these two come in pairs. Remember we talked about this? Conjugate pairs. These two things are called conjugates. Conjugates are things where the, the two <coughs> numbers used are exactly the same, only the middle sign is different. Just the middle sign is different. So now we start to put together our uh, our uh, polynomial. So if 5 is a 0, then how does that help us start to put together a polynomial? Uh, what about x minus 5? Is it a 0? So, or, sorry, 5 is a 0, x minus 5 is a what? Factor. It's a factor. So we could. We know that we should be able to multiply this by some other factors to get this polynomial we're looking for. Well, yeah, another factor should be x minus 5, because there's another factor, or another 0 of 5. Okay? x minus 4 plus i, okay? and x minus 4 minus i. Can someone explain why when I put four minus here, I put this in parentheses? <coughs> Well, that's what I do because there's parentheses, but why did I put parentheses in the first place? Why, how, why don't I just put x minus 4 plus i right here? Instead of parentheses, why don't I not use parentheses? Pardon? Because 4 plus i and 4 minus i are the zeros. 4 plus i and 4 minus i are the zeros, right? Here I'm subtracting 5. 5 is the 0. I put it right there. I put the 5 right there. This 4i, 4 plus i, excuse me, needs to go right there. It needs to be the thing that I'm subtracting from x in the factor. Okay. Make sure you understand that. We 
multiply these together, this part's easy. If we multiply these together, that's going to be x, negative 5x, negative 5x, and negative 5 plus negative 5. Okay. Now this next part, let's distribute the negative, x minus 4 minus i, and x minus 4 minus 4 plus i. Now, at this point, you could just multiply everything together. You could just distribute the x through here, x to there, x to there, x to there, okay, and then the 4, then the negative i. Okay, you can absolutely do that. It would be absolutely correct. Okay, but I want to help you do it in a little bit shorter form. Okay. So, to help you do that, parentheses around the x minus 4. Show you why I did that. Because I want to show you that that's identical, and those are identical. X minus four and x minus four are identical. I and I, those are identical. The only difference is there's a negative there and a positive there. What do we call that when the two things are identical but the middle sign is different? Conjugate. Conjugate. Okay. A neat thing happens when you multiply <laughs> conjugates. Okay. A really neat thing happens when you multiply conjugates. Let's multiply some real generalized conjugates. A plus B and A minus B. Okay, so we're pausing here for a second. Right, and I just want to show you what happens when you multiply two conjugates together. You ready for that? How about actually let you guys do that? Okay, you guys multiply these two conjugates together. Distribute the A, distribute the B, let's see what happens. Okay, so we can real good. We get uh, a times a is a squared. A times negative b is negative ab. All right, we distribute the a. That's done. B times a, that we could write as a times b, just whatever. I like to write it in alphabetical order sometimes. B times negative b, negative b squared. So what happens? The, what's the kind of neat thing that happens when we multiply these conjugates together? The a b's cancel. We just get a squared times b squared. Okay. So now you wind up with the first thing squared and minus the second thing, squared. Okay. We've seen this before, this is like a difference of squares. Right? This, that's what I mean. And that would be a difference of squares. Okay. So, I'm gonna leave a middle step, which we'll do after we do like the shortcut version, just so that we can verify once again that this happens. Okay. So, in this case, we have two conjugates. What's a? Over here. What's that? Just x? X minus 4 is like your a. You see how it is like a minus b and a plus b. Yeah? This is like your b. If you use this nice little shortcut, what will we wind up with? What will we get? Something squared? Minus something squared. Yes, right. Plus one. Plus one. Okay. So you multiply it by multiply negative i by positive i. So we should get negative squared. Negative i squared. And then plus one, plus one because why plus one? I squared is negative one. I negative squared is negative one. one. I squared is negative one, so negative, negative one is positive one. Okay, so you got positive one, and we'll go ahead and multiply this out. X squared minus eight X plus 16 plus the one. X squared minus 10 X plus 25. X squared minus eight X plus 17. Okay, so I said we'd do this in between step. Okay. So I just wanna to prove to you this does happen. We still have this. So I'm treating x minus 4 like it's one thing, which we could do. Uh, we could group 4 minus i, or, or you know, whatever we want to do. But if we group x minus 4, then we get conjugates, which is a good thing. So x minus 4 times x minus 4 gives us our x minus 4 squared. That 
times itself. And then x minus 4 times positive i, that's x minus 4 times positive i. And then we can move on to the negative i, distribute that. Negative i times x minus 4, that's negative x minus 4 times i. And negative i times positive i is negative i squared. And just like this general conjugate, we have x minus 4 times i minus x, four, x minus 4 times i. They just cancel each other out. And we get x minus 4 squared minus i squared. Um, I will multiply these together for you, but I just want you to practice multiplying complex conjugates together. So I'm just going to make up uh, another complex conjugate. Tyler, you have a question before we do that? Yes. How did you get to 16 and then just, how did you get that? How did you get 16? Yeah. Okay, so I did x minus 4 times x minus 4. Oh, so you're just distributing. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to do uh, x minus 5 plus 3i, and our conjugate will be x minus uh, minus 3i. So we have to distribute the negative and then group those two together and make the conjugates right. Okay. So I want you to do that. So let's, let's multiply those two three complex conjugates together. x minus 5 minus 3i, x minus 5 plus 3i. If we view those as being grouped together, then we see these are conjugates. And then we get x minus 5 times x minus 5 is x minus 5 squared. And negative 3i times positive 3i is negative. Don't forget that 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? It's kind of tricky. When you're using the shortcut, you sometimes will put 3i squared. Remember, 3 times 3 is, is 9, and i times i is i squared. And here we get x squared minus 10x plus 25 plus 9. So x squared minus 10x plus 34. There we go. That's a tricky thing. You know, recognize them as conjugates and multiply them together with an i negative ones and all that stuff. It's good to keep that practice there. Right. This we should be able to do, but I'm going to multiply them together real quickly just so you can maybe <coughs> check your work yourself. Maybe if you like the way that I do it, that's fine. If you like the way that I do it, you can copy do it, but I'm just going to uh, color code it. And I'll first start with the x squared. I'm going to start with x to the fourth, minus 8x to the third, plus 17x squared, and um, blue, blue, and negative 10. Uh, negative 10x to the third, um, plus 80x squared, minus 170x, black. Plus 25x squared minus 400x, 200x. Plus 425. So x to the fourth. Then we'll move on to the thirds, these two, so put those together, negative 18x to the third, squared, 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 so let's see, um, uh, my 8 squared is with 80. Yeah, yeah. 80. I did that yeah. last class too, I don't know why. <laughs> 97x squared, and so 122, 22, 22x squared, done. Negative 370x plus 425. So if you keep track of all your stuff, you can write down 80 when it's supposed to be 80.
let's uh, just reflect on this problem. What's the, uh, what's the hardest part? You think this part will apply the positive parts together? Just starting it. Just starting it. Starting it. Minus four. No, we don't know that you should do anything. Yeah. Knowing x minus four plus i. Yeah, because like once I got started, it was like kind of started to flow. But starting it, I just kind of struggled a lot. For sure. So what makes that so tricky then? Just starting this. Oh, yes, are not given. Yeah, I just looked at the same. You're just given different information okay. than you used to. Okay, that's true. That's a kind of a new problem, getting it to start with an imaginary zero. Especially, I guess, since we don't normally, like, we're, we're trying to do this with process in reverse, but we don't normally come up with factors that look like this and solve for x and get uh, 4 plus i. That doesn't usually happen, right? Um, yeah, that part's a little bit tricky because it's hard. It would be hard to go back to the quadratic formula in reverse engineer from there. Mm -hmm. okay. But it is helpful to think of the quadratic formula and remembering that if they give you four plus i, remember four minus i. They give you three minus two i. Remember three plus two i. They come in pairs. If they didn't come in pairs when we multiplied it all together, we wouldn't have this nice conjugate pair and this cancellation that happens and this i squared turning into a negative one. We wouldn't have all those nice things happening didn't have this conjugate pair. So just remove the conjugate pair. So what can we do then? Is it you think it's just practice that makes it possible to remember x <coughs> yeah. minus four plus i? Okay. So maybe if you go home and give it one last try, you know, start start fresh. You can even make up your own. Right? Can you just make up make the zeros kind of small, you know, say three, negative two. 5 plus 2i, 5 minus 2i, and go at it, okay? <coughs> um, so those are two tricky parts. Uh, is there anything we can do today that makes it easier, maybe more helpful? Just another question. <coughs> Oh, just another question. Yeah. Uh, actually, here's what we're going to do. Um, we are going to have another question, but you're going to make it up. Okay? In a, in a, in a in part, you're going to make it up. Um, so here's what we're going to do. And another thing, don't always depend, though I will do my best to give you as much practice, but if, if today weren't the kind of day that it is where we, you know, so we got this long break ahead, and so I gotta think, do I want to give you homework and see if you'll do it, and then do I wanna try and keep B day up with you? No, because tomorrow's a really short day. Like, I'm considering all these things. If today wasn't the kind of day it was, it was just a normal day, we need to move on. We would have time to do this next thing that we're about to do, right? So if you feel like you need just one more, it couldn't take you that long. Just write a little note. Uh, to try one more homework problem when you get home from 5.7 of this kind, right? Take a few minutes and, and do that, right? Now, if you if you come in and you just do what I prescribe and you just do that practice problem and you get your homework done, but you don't really uh, just do your homework, you don't have to be doing homework and really use, utilizing your homework, right? You know what I'm saying? So if you just get it done, somebody who's like, I'm really going to use this homework for all it's worth, and I'm going to practice and practice and practice. Um, it sounds like the difference between probably a, a C and an A student. Those students who really drive themselves to practice are the ones who really know their stuff. Okay. So we are going to practice a little bit more. Hopefully it'll be a little bit fun. It'll be fun. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. I want each group to brainstorm together. You're going to come up with a polynomial with zeros that you decide on. Then when you're all done and you found a polynomial, write it on a fresh piece of paper and then we'll all exchange. And then each group that gets this polynomial <coughs> finds zeros in that polynomial, okay? See what I'm saying? So let's, let's work on both of those. It gives you practice at 
uh, making a polynomial from the given zeros, which is probably the trickiest part. And then it gives each of you, each in the group, also a little more practice of finding zeros. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Write a polynomial, make up a polynomial that has one real zero and two imaginary zeros. Two, I shouldn't use the word imaginary, it's in the last class. And two complex zeros. Okay. We call these imaginary a lot. Complex is just there's also maybe a real number right here. So a plus is minus. Oh, can you real paper on that? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Origin. It's about a year back. Well, that too. I'm finding these places. This. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Pick one real zero, two complex zeros, with the real zero, be kind, because if you think about it, the person who gets this is going to have to set up that list, right, that rational zero test list <coughs> of all the factors and constants. If this number is quite large and has lots of, lots of factors, they're going to have lots of guesses to make, okay? So, in order to do that, keep this real zero, a, for one, an integer, not a decimal, Okay, and between negative 10 and positive 10, let's say. Right. Uh, you can do whatever you want, right? Whatever you want, but between negative 10 and positive 10, and um, not a decimal, not a fraction, be kind, there's an integer. Yes, I don't know, I just sort of want it.